how much do I love this bag? I will tell you. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with Aquaric, where we talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content that you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. Well, hello! It feels like it's been eons since I last filmed, so I apologize if I seem a bit rusty. I feel a bit rusty, but here we are. I'm back again. Now, I've really been looking forward to talking about the topic of the day, which is the review of my Briant MM from Delvo. And one of the reasons that I've been waiting to do this video, aside from the fact that I've been on a hiatus, is because I wanted to really use this bag and use it in order to be able to give you a, a proper review on it and utilizing it, the pros, the cons, and all that sort of thing. I have owned this bag for about six months now. I got it last uh, July, August-ish, and I have traveled with this bag. I've used it on day to day. I took this to Italy with me last year when I went in October, and I think that I now have a really good idea of how this bag works. The pros, the cons, as I said, what it looks like on me, how I prefer to carry it, and so I'm going to share that with you today. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the about Delvo because I think that Delvo is definitely an under the radar brand. They have a huge rich history and heritage. They've been around since 1829. They're they're actually the first luxury leather goods company to exist. They are older than Belgium. They're older than Hermes. I think that their bags are beautiful. All their leather goods are beautiful. They've got amazing quality, impeccable craftsmanship. They are handmade. And I think that if you're looking for a brand that is maybe not even as well known as Hermes, like very understated, uh, under the radar, kind of like a quiet luxury, Hermes, of course, is a, a amazing brand with a rich heritage and wonderful, beautiful pieces. But uh, they're, they're a lot in the media now, very mainstream. And like, I think that the average person might even be able to pick out a Birkin these days, which isn't like a bad thing necessarily, but sometimes you don't want to have like a Birkin on your arm. And that's different for different people. Obviously some people want to have a Birkin on their arm every single day of the week, and that is fantastic. Good job, you guys. But you know, I just, I think it's another option and another alternative to a, a amazing heritage house that isn't talked about a lot. So I, I think I'm actually going to be making a video that's just like about Dovo in, in, in general, but um, I'm, I'm mostly going to be waxing poetic about this bag today. This is, as I said, this is the Brion bag. Um, it is in the MM size. There are four sizes of the Brion. There's the Mini, the PM, the MM, and the GM. And then there's like the XXLL or whatever, but like I'm, I'm not really counting that as a version of the Brion because that's a different style completely. Now the Brion bag has been around since 1958. It was actually invented for the Brussels World Fair, and it was the first bag that Davo had created that had the D symbolism within it, in this case with the stylized buckle and um, the stylized handle. Um, it also does have a little D charm on it right here that my bag includes, but that wasn't part of the original design. And I think this bag is a gorgeous piece of leather and craftsmanship. This particular bag is in the box calf leather. Uh, Hermes has its own types of heritage leathers. Their box calf is different from Hermes box calf, but it does have the ability to develop a beautiful patina. This is a smooth leather, and as you can see, it is quite shiny. It also is uh, prone to scratches because it is a smooth leather, but this is a very durable leather as well, and I don't worry as much about it. It does have some scratches. I bought this bag pre Loved. I have an unboxing on it where I am incandescent with glee. I'll link it for you because it is, in my opinion, kind of delightful actually. And it is just, it, it, it's, I, I mean, I, I, I sometimes have trouble coming up with the words for how happy this bag makes me and how beautiful it is and how well thought out it is. So for instance, a couple of different elements of this bag is that the handle, you'll see this handle, it has smooth leather on the bottom and the stitches are on the top. And that is because Delvo designed it specifically for comfort. So when you're holding the bag, your hands, your fingers are touching mostly the smooth leather. So the stitches aren't like digging into your fingers, especially because this is a hefty bag. Sometimes that can cause discomfort if you're holding onto the stitches. And so Delvo designed it in that way that it isn't. Uh, in, in contrast, Hermes, the stitches are on the bottom and the top is uh, smooth leather. And that's because Hermes designed the bag for the leather to be showcased as much as possible. 
so you have the smooth leather on the top and the stitches on the bottom. It's just ways that two different houses design uh, two different handles. Now the clasp on the Delvo is also obviously one of the hallmarks of the bag. It's got the D of the brand in it and it is, uh, you know, a big stylistic point of this bag. And a lot of people say that the buckle is quite fiddly and I agree with that to a point. Uh, it was originally a con when I first got the bag that I knew I was getting into, but the more that I've used the bag, the easier it's gotten for me to operate the buckle, and now I can do it very smoothly one-handed. might be a little bit hard from this angle, but you just pull up on the tongue like this. The metal part pops down super easily, and then you can open it up like that. And I find that pretty easy. I do like that there's the security of the buckle because the average person is not fiddling into your bag that way. But uh, it's not difficult or cumbersome for me to open it one-handed. And I primarily carry this top handle, actually. It does have a strap option, but I prefer the top handle version. Now, the inside of the bag is an open space, but it does have some compartments in here. It's got a zipper pocket in the back, right there. Zipper pocket in the back. It's got an attached D-ring, which I think is really cool. And then in the front for this particular bag, it has also a slip pocket with a little bit of a, with a snap button closure for just a little bit of security. Now, one thing I do want to say that for this style, that front flap pocket is not really big enough to hold my phone standing up, which I would prefer if it was a little bit deeper. It doesn't run the entire length of the bag. It's fine. I don't use it for my phone then. I, I would prefer if I did because it's such a big open space. Sometimes your belongings can get lost inside of this bag. But for the most part, I, I don't really find that it's much of an issue because of the way that the bag is, uh, is, is shaped. Another really interesting detail on this bag is that if you can see here on the corners of this part, let's see if I can show you, you see that metal bit, that metal uh, ring right there? It's on both sides. And that's to help prevent wear on the front of the bag with the flap opening and closing. And I don't often see stuff like that on, on bags, luxury or otherwise, where there's a very small detail that is designed to help the bag uh, for the long term, you know, just to last a, a, a forever, or well, forever, but for a lot longer than it might if you did have that wear on the flap over and over again. It's just, it's just a, such a small detail, but it's just a, a, a cool little element of how much thought went into creating this this piece. And I, I think that's so cool. Like, I mean, you know, it was invented for the Brussels World Flare in 1958. That's pretty neat. The bag does have feet on the bottom. It's got the, the four feet, no foot in the middle, just the four. And because of the shape of the bag and this structure, especially with the box cap leather, that is sufficient. I don't feel that I need a fifth foot in the middle. I have never had a problem with putting this bag down anywhere. I do try to hang it if I can, but if it, you know the feet support it, I, I don't really mind putting it down. A fun little element about this bag in particular, which I did talk about so much in my unboxing video, but I'm gonna mention it now too, is that you might see the writing on this that says, Ceci n'est pas un Delvo. This is not a Delvo. This is the Le Humor bag from a showcase collection that Delvo did a while back. And this is the Rene Marguerite bag. Um, the Rene Marguerite, this realist painter who did the very famous Ceci n'est pas un pipe. This is not a pipe. You know, the painting of the pipe that is not a pipe. I, I think that the, I love cleverness so much, <laughs> so much. It, it, yeah, um, I, you might know by now, because I've talked about it a couple of times on my channel, I'm a writer, and I love words so much. I love the cleverness that they can do and, and, and mean. And so something like the Surrealist Movement that takes into wordplay and art at the same time and combines it into such an interesting, unusual, unique whimsy. I, I love that so much. And so I, I really enjoy the embodiment of that in a handbag that I get to wear and use every day. And so I just, I really like the meaning behind this bag. I love the work and craftsmanship that went into the make of this bag, the history and the heritage of, of this bag and the brand. And, you know, the Hill Humor one is such a special one to me because of the, the meaning behind it and, and just the, the cleverness and whimsy that Delvo it infuses into a lot of its pieces. Novo has two, actually, only two um, collections a year. They have spring, summer, and fall, winter. And for both collections, they usually have special, uh, unique pieces that they put out for each one. Really interesting colors, or unique style, or a different design. And I, I think that they're they're so cool. Like for the fall winter um, of, of 2023, they have these bags that have these um, these like almost star starburst spike patterns on them. 
and I, I think they're so cool, I, you know, it's so pretty and just like edgy but pretty in a way that still is classic. And I, you know, I love how much they do in terms of their design, as I've said uh, a number of times in this video already. So about the Briant bag specifically, so I did wear this bag to Italy. I traveled with it. I took it on the plane with me to Italy. I wore it pretty much every day uh, as my regular handbag, except when I was going out for dinner or something like that. And I thought that was a little big for that. And I primarily wore this as a hand carry bag and I had no problems with that. I really enjoyed wearing it on my arm and I thought that it would be too heavy because a couple of the cons of this bag, I'm going to go through that first, is that the bag is quite heavy. This is a very heavy bag and it is, it's full leather, it's full box calf leather and it's got, you know, uh, heavy metal elements on it too, so it's a very heavy bag. But I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. I wore this on the crook of my arm, primarily, and I felt that that was quite comfortable. I didn't find it overly cumbersome either. So even though it was a heavy bag, and I think that it would bother somebody who is prone to being bothered by heavy bags. Um, I, it didn't bother me. I also did have the option of a strap. Now the Briant has two different kinds of straps. This review is all over the place. I'm sorry. Uh, the Briant has two different kinds of straps. They have the older style where the strap hooks underneath the, the top flap and that's what this style is. Um, my style has a little slip pocket here where the strap hooks uh, underneath, and I prefer that style. That's actually one of the reasons why I didn't purchase this bag, the Lehumer bag, new from Boutique. It's because I don't love the MM strap that is currently uh, the current design. The strap was redesigned in, I believe, 2019, and now the it's attached to D-rings on the top here. And I think that that design just looks a little bit clunkier. And so I wasn't willing to purchase the bag new with the new strap design. Knowing what I do now about how I primarily carry this bag, I would be more willing to buy an MM new from Boutique uh, or an MM with the new strap style because I, because I primarily carry it by the a crook of the arm. The fact that the strap uh, links here it, it is kind of negligible to me. I will sometimes put it on my shoulder just to get it off, um, just to be a little bit more hands-free if I need to in a pinch, but for the most part I just carried the strap in its dust bag in the bag and I, I didn't use it. So even though there is the con of the heaviness of the bag, it, it didn't bother me. Now, the other con is that, you know, the buckle is a little bit fiddly, but I already talked about that, that you, the more you use it, the easier it gets to open and close. And I like the security of the buckle, actually. And because I had the, the skill of being able to open and close it over the period of me utilizing the bag and using it, then it, it became not a, not a problem and I, I didn't mind it. A third con is that there is no back pocket. It's perfectly smooth on the back. And I honestly don't consider that a con really because it's the design of the bag. And I think a back pocket would in some ways kind of take away from the beautiful lines of this bag. So I don't mind that it doesn't have a back pocket. But if you really like to have a back pocket for easy access to like your phone or something, this doesn't have one. And because the clasp can be a little bit fiddly if you're not used to it, it might find it kind of cumbersome to have to open the bag to get your phone out and and then close the bag and then use your phone and then open the bag again to put your phone back in. So I can see why that would be an issue. I primarily kept my phone on me, like I was holding my phone a lot of the time, so it really didn't bother me. But when I did need to stow my phone in my bag, I it didn't, I wasn't a problem. I didn't have an issue with that. But it is a con that, you know, you might find if you were interested in this type of bag. It doesn't have a pocket on the back. It's very heavy. The clasp can be a little bit fiddly. That's kind of it. I mean, it is the only other thing that I can think about about this bag that that might be considered a con is that the bag, because it is tall, you sometimes can lose your stuff inside. Now this bag can fit quite a lot, but of course the more you put in it, the heavier it's going to get, and it's already pretty heavy, so I understand not wanting to overstuff it. But because the bag is tall, you can sometimes lose your things like in the bottom if you're trying to find stuff. I got pretty good at like putting my things in a certain order in certain places so I could reach in and find them pretty fast. But 
it, you know, if it shifts around, like your wallet might fall to the bottom of the bag and then you kind of have to root around to find it. When I use this bag, I specifically used uh, a bigger, a slightly bigger wallet instead of like a card holder or something because I thought that that might get lost inside. But I also, if I wanted to use a card holder, I could put the card holder in one of the slip pockets or the zipper pockets so I would know exactly where it is. So, you know, it, 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 there, it just kind of depends on how you want to use it. Now, in terms of what fits, this is a pretty sizable bag and so you can fit quite a lot in it. But but again, you know, the more you put in it, the heavier it does get. I do want to just show you for uh, reference that this, because of the shape though, the, the trapezoidal shape, some things that you expect might be able to fit in it can't. So this is like an iPad in a bulky case. As you can see, it is too big to fit into this bag. It could fit into the bottom of the bag, but it couldn't fit into the top. So uh, an iPad not in a case might be able to slip in, but I, I don't know. I've never taken my iPad out of this case once I put it in and I don't use this without a case. A mini iPad definitely could fit. A Kindle could definitely fit, but uh, an I, this, is an I, this was an iPad Air. An iPad Pro could definitely not fit in this bag. Not that I would, put an iPad in this bag really. Like maybe a mini if I was traveling and I wanted to write something on it really quick, but I can use my phone for that, honestly. But in terms of what fits, again, this this does fit quite a lot. So here are just some examples. So this is a, a little notebook, you know, that fits in perfectly fine. A mini pochette that also fits in perfectly fine. Um, this is just a little uh, travel case that I use to keep my external battery, a charger, and a um, cable in for, for travel, which is a very important for me, you know, if I'm traveling. And this was a bag that I traveled with, so that also fits in there. And there you go. Your phone obviously can fit inside. So this is an iPhone um, 13 Pro with a very bulky case and that fits inside here. It's a bottomless pit in some capacity because it does have a lot of capacity. This is a small water bottle. This is a 12 ounce water bottle and you can just slide that in as well. And that's like, there's a lot, there, <laughs> there's so much in there and a little bit more can fit obviously if you want a wallet. This is a, a pretty bulky uh, wallet. This is a, a coach wallet from the Legacy Collection. It's, it's you know, it's a compact, but it's a pretty big compact. And let's just slide that in here too. And there you go. So you got a notebook, a water bottle, a mini pochette, a little pouch with an external battery and charger in it. Did I say a water bottle? There's a water bottle. There's my phone and there's a wallet inside. Now, this is incredibly heavy. This is this is a very heavy bag right now. I would not pack this bag this full because I didn't mind the weight before. I didn't mind the weight with some things in it, but I mind the weight with a full water bottle, a notebook, all this stuff. But if you wanted to carry like an entire notebook in it and a full water bottle and all these other things, you could. But so that's just an example of what fits inside of it. And I'm sorry that it's not like a sit down really pretty one. I'll put like a picture of other things that can fit in so you can see uh, a better idea of, of how that all goes. But yeah, it's it's a beautiful bag. I, I love I love how it looks. I love how it feels. I love using it. I love how it makes me feel when I wear it. And I think it's special. I think Delvo is a special brand that doesn't get a lot of press and I don't mind that it doesn't. I like that it's an understated bag that's under the radar, but it is a worthwhile brand if you're interested in something like this, something beautiful and quality and heritage. You can't go wrong with Delvo. If you like how the bags look, I 100% recommend them. I 100% recommend their SLGs. I am looking into actually getting a couple of their SLGs. I love maybe a mini or a PM. I really like the PM size. I don't live near a Delvo boutique. The last boutique I went to was in Italy, but <laughs> I, I plan to make several purchases from them in the future. I collect luxury handbags and I like luxury handbags. I love luxury leathers. I love the, the craftsmanship and the quality of what goes into these pieces. And you can have, you know, debates about whether or not they're worth it to anybody, but they're worth it to me and they're worth it to a lot of you, I think. And in terms of worth, I think Delvo is definitely up there as to why it's worth the price and why it deserves the, the accolades that it does get. And so that is my uh, review of my Briant MM bag. I can't wait to wear this again. I love looking for occasions where I can wear this. Like I take this to museums with me. I take this just to the mall with me. And 
it's 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 such a it's such a gorgeous piece i i know that i keep saying the same thing over and over but i really love this this is definitely one of the crowning jewels of my collection and honestly since i got this bag there isn't a lot more that i've been acquiring i got this bag in uh july july august i, I don't remember which which month it was one of the two and um since then i've, I've gotten two other things two two other bags and I have a few more things that are on my radar, but for the most part, I'm, I'm very content with my collection. I do have a few wishlist items that are on my wine. I do have a reveal that I want to show you very soon. Uh, it's very exciting when I hinted to it a little bit a while ago in a previous video, and that is something that I also have been wanting for a really long time. And aside from that, you know, wishlist bags aside, like this is, this is makes me so happy. This makes me so happy to have, and I I can't I can't say that enough. So I I'm, I'm probably gonna just stop it here, but I hope that you enjoyed this review as all over the place as it was. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content because it helps the algorithm even more. I would love to hear what you think about Davo, what you think about this bag. If you think that my um, love for it is a little bit too much, or if you kind of understand where I'm coming from, I would love to know what you think about the humor, like the the Magritte Davo, and what I think about their whimsy because I, I I love talking about that with you guys. And I also would just like to know whether or not Davo is on your radar. If you've heard of it before, if it's been on your radar previously, if it's on your radar now, or if there's another brand that is a little bit understated or that you don't hear people talking about like Moina or something like that. If there's another brand that you want me to talk about or look into, I'd love to hear it as well. I'd love to hear your suggestions. And as always, I love enjoying talking to you in the comments, so I enjoyed that too. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.